There are cues in nature that you could set your watch to, one of which is the movement of largemouth bass to weed lines and deeper patches of underwater vegetation from their shallower springtime haunts. The name of the game? Experiment with depth. While chasing one of their favorite types of forage, bluegills, largemouth bass could be above the weeds, down in the weeds, or on the outside weed edges. It all comes down to the location of the gills. It's hard to beat horizontal running baits in most situations, with the vertical moving bait as an ace in the hole. And success most often comes down to covering lots of water and finding exactly the right depth the bass are utilizing to target their prey. On today's Edge, Al and James Linder do just that, breaking out the bass gear for a summertime largey run on a Midwestern natural lake. They run through the ABCs of finding success like this where you fish, sharing some shortcuts to spend more time fighting bass and less time chasing them. Now let's check in with the boys as they spend a day following largemouth. You got a whole school of them sitting there. That's a better one, Jim, look at that. Yeah, beautiful That one's got fish. some weight to it. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Oh, there's one. Oh, that one was way up there, Al. Yeah, a little bit better one there. That's a better one. Spot lock on. That isn't a bad one. Oops, it's on spot lock. You know, when you're fishing weeds, one of the real keys is actually, is where the fish is positioned in the weeds. You know, throughout the summer months, these fish move up and down in the weeds based on a couple of th different things. Number one is food. You know, the bluegills and the different forage that they feed on move up and down in the water column, as well as weather. So what's really important when you're making a lure selection is experimenting where the bait is moving. Sometimes if they're down deep in the weeds, you're gonna need penetrating baits. Other times when the fish are up high, baits swimming over the tops high in the weeds can be the you know the baits of choice but we're just this is sort of early on so we're just experimenting trying to figure out where the fish are positioned now the other day I was out on a lake with my buddy like this and we and my brother man did we pound a big fish and they were all cranking yeah yeah you know and if you and if you went down deep with a jig and in in a shaky worm or or uh, a Texas rig critter in the deep weeds, you caught the small fish. All the big fish were high in the water column. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it changes so much. Here's the thing. In our lakes, the main forage in a lot of these weed lakes is bluegills and cross. Yeah, you know, bass love them. And the bluegills dictate pretty much everything. And what basically happens when the fish get negative and they're real tough to catch, those bluegills go down in the weeds and the bass just, uh, there's not much happening. Yeah, you know, they don't, they don't hunt for them. Everything is negative. The bluegills are buried down in the weeds. Nothing's happened. And when they get, when the bluegills come up out of the weeds, get high above the weeds or come out of the weeds and out on the edge, sometimes go down on the rock piles and you catch the big schools of big bass there. That's what's happening. It's all based on what those bluegills are doing in these lakes. You'll understand the bluegill spring, summer, fall, and you're gonna catch a lot of bass, a lot of them. There he is. Ooh, there's one. Whoa, it's a little bit better one there. You know, the lake we're fishing on here, this thing has just tremendously large weed flats and the weed flats start like in depending on where you're at in the lake anywhere from you know almost 15 foot of water and actually go for blocks that way 
of just expansive flats of weeds. So what you need is definitely tools enabling you to cover a lot of water to figure out where they're at in the flat itself. Look at that, right now we're fishing, sort of holding on the deepest uh, uh, weed edge and casting as far up as possible. The last couple of hits we've had, we've been hitting the fish on the end of our cast. So what we're gonna st start doing is slipping in a little bit. We haven't been catching them on the deepest weed edge right now, or right on this particular spot anyway. Oh, there's one. Seems like these winds got the fish moving pretty good. Come here, buddy. This segment has been brought to you by Donlinger Automotive, and they want to encourage you to drive safe on the road and on the water. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. So one thing when you get in these big weed lakes, what's sort of interesting that these spots, when you get on these spots, you know, this lake has a tremendous, look at it, yeah, it's got a great big I one swimming it. with I, it. I got, him, got, got another here, big too. one with it. What, I you got, got another one? Wow, oh, up. that's a different fish. Yeah. yeah. No, I had another one following me. That was sort of oh, cool. Mine is off. Wow. Come on. But what I was saying is you get on these spots, we're on these giant flats, you know, throughout right now, it's like the first week in August, and these fish are really set up in big schools. You have big schools of these fish out in given spots, but you gotta spend the time to go find them. So, and this is, see, when you look at this way out here, it's weeds from here all the way to shore. That's how big this weed flat is. I mean, it's five blocks deep. You know, look at the depth finder here. It's sort of interesting on the hummingbird. You can see how my map, you can see where I'm right now, I'm in a spot lock position right here, but there's a deep inside corner where deeper water cuts in right in this particular spot. And then there's a more of a distinct weed wall right here. And the last couple of fish we've caught have come right from that specific spot. This high resolution mapping, like on these Lake Masters is just an unbelievable tool to figure out where these fish would be along a lot of these given spots. You know what I mean? Just based on depth contour, how sharp is the drop? Do you have a big, more of a tapered flat? Do you have a sharper wall drop? Bulldogging, bulldogging. Not giant, not a giant. I lost those other ones and I... Okay. Look at this, I'll show you something here. See these weeds hanging on here? See the weeds around here? I gotta show you something on this brat. This particular bait, you know, we fish a lot of weed, weed, weed lakes. And uh, years and years ago, a bait that we used, a hard bait that we used was a storm wiggle wart. Many of you know what the wiggle wart, big fat bait with a fat square lip. And you could fish it over those weeds really good. You could break it loose. Loose was a phenomenal bait. And then when they came out with, BX came out with this, new bait that this is the brat six look at that design on the front of that thing those weeds there's no way those weeds get cut in there you pull it you break loose the weeds just break off the bait so easy so easy it's a phenomenal weed bait for cranking over the top of this stuff in this particular one on the lakes that we fish the six it gets down about five ish which is perfect for the top of these weeds and it's got amazing hooks. But the design of the bait, and it's one tough sucker. How many times that when you're fishing weeds, he's got another fish? Nope, he don't. You, you go like this to, to crack, you, you know, to knock, knock the weeds off. You could do that all day with this one and you ain't gonna break that lip off. This thing is a workhorse, man. An absolute workhorse, phenomenal bait. Oop, there's another one. Oop, oh, oh, there he is. Oh, come here, buddy. Oh, come on. Look at that guy. Huh, nice. Come here, buddy. Oh, come here. Boy, he crunched it pretty good. Come here. Oh, oh, 
Well, you can see the way he hit that bait. I mean, he engulfed it. There you go. Not being prepared with the pliers. There we go. A lot of times that, that crankbait is a really hot bait for weed fishing scenarios, no question about it. Particularly in the fact that you can cover a tremendous amount of water is the real key with that. You know, today's day and age, uh, bass fishing, or like oh, almost any different fishing, is really presentation specific. In other words, a rod, reel, and line is really sort of fine-tuned for that given fishing situation. Right now, throwing this crankbait, what I got is a, a St. Croix 7 foot 4 medium heavy power glass rod. And what's really critical about this, it's a medium heavy. A lot of times uh, for crankbait fishing situations, a lot of people will fish with medium action rods. For weed fishing situations, you want more of that medium heavy. And the reason for that is the ability when you hit the weeds, hit different things, you can rip the bait through it. And that's what's really critical. If you have too soft of a rod, it actually just collapses the bait into the weeds. And what I want to do is literally tear it through it. You know, and right now I got uh, 14 pound uh, advanced mono uh, suffix line. And this is a Tatula 6.3 gear ratio reel, reel. I like a little bit slower gear ratio reel. A lot of uh, my reels, for a lot of the other fishing situations, I have real fast gear ratio reels, 8.1s, 7.3s, you know. For this type of for crankbait fishing, I got a little bit slower reel on there. This BX Brat is so cool. This whole BX series, got, you know, Balsa Extreme, it's got a hard coating on it. But this thing is a, this is a big bass bait, really a big bass bait. It is so buoyant when you're fishing over, over these weeds and touching the top of them, besides breaking free on a clear cast all the time, let me show you. Yeah, you know, I can crank down fairly fast, so get down to five feet, five, five, five feet and then I, I, I slow it. But if you pause it, or you, you know, you pull into something, you pause, it is so buoyant, it backs right out. You'd have to see it underwater and feel the bait. I mean, it really is an incredible bait. I've been fishing it quite a bit this season with amazing success. Amazing success, highly impressed with the bait. But that buoyancy in any kind of bass fishing, you, you know, you're cranking down, cranking down, then you stop, and that bait, bait when, it, when it bounces back, especially in warm weather, they like that. You know, they go, Bleh. Oh, there's one, got him. That one came on the crankbait out. Oh. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Nope. Yeah, there you go. Come hey, on, buddy. Nice. He just crunched on the square bill, sort of slow rolling it over the tops of the weeds. In this particular spot right here, actually the weeds come up within, it's a little bit uh, tighter drop off, but then the, the flat, the weeds actually come up within like four or five feet of the surface. So I just picked up the square bill and made two casts and caught one. We'll see if we can get some more on this. I told you, I mean, it just one. Look at that one. <laughs> yeah! When you get them right, they're right. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <sighs> That's a good one, huh? That's a good one. Doom, da -doom, doom, doom. Everything after the spawn for any kind of fish is where's the food? Bluegills are plenty up north. When they're pigging out on those gills, you could feel the, you could look at their stomachs when they're eating them, usually when they're high in the water column on those hotter, muggy days where they hit top water. He's got one. Nice one. Yeah. 
Ooh. Oop, there's one. Oh, way out there. Wow. Be another donkey. Yeah, it is, too. <laughs> I think. Can't catch up with them. Maybe it's a pike. I don't know what it is here. Double and big ones. Yeah. Oh, look wow, at that. Wow, look at that. Wow. Wow. Look at that. It... Yeah. <laughs> We're on a good pack of them in here. Look at that one there. Ooh, it's starting to crunch on the uh, the crankbait pretty good. The drill and the brad. It's, these fish are moving up a little bit higher in the water column. We'll get her back. That's a good one. Whoa. Ah, got him, Jim. Got him? Yeah, good one, good Better one. Better one? Yeah, good one. I missed a few back there, you know, bam, bam, bam. I had three in a row in there, boom, one. boom, boom. You know, I'm, I'm in a back. Jim's been uh, uh, doing the the swim bait and the, and, uh, the uh, BX Brad a lot in front. So a lot of cases, you know, on a lot of these lakes, you got bass doing a number of different things. I'm catching bass behind them right now, pounding a three-quarter ounce Terminator, jig and craw, black, blue, bread and butter. You know, I caught some fish on a jig worm. I caught some fish on a, a craw tube. You know, you know, but it is amazing if you're just fishing one way, just one way, you, and, and it, let's say that you're, you're jig fishing only, and the fish are real high up in the water column, you're fishing under tons of fish. Yeah, you know, and vice versa. It could go two different ways. So when you got two guys in a boat, you're always, always, always mi mixing it up. Always mixing it up just to make sure you don't miss something. It, they're doing whatever the bluegills are telling them to do. Gills are down, sometimes they're in bo both. The pattern is you can get them deep weed line and up on top with wind. So don't be afraid with two guys in a boat to really mix it up. Somebody should be fishing down a lot just to make sure you're not missing anything. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. That's a better one. You know, you, we're, we're talking about fish high for, for gills in the weeds. We're talking about deep presentations. Different presentations are triggering fish different. You know, weight of the jig can be critical. And uh, this is a three quarter ounce. Yeah, yeah, you know, you bound, you, you, if you watch the way I'm fishing, I'm really fishing it, fishing it hard. I'm really snapping it. You know, and you're actually triggering those fish. A lot of times a simple, simple thing like that jig weight in here or the weight on your, on, on a Texas rig, say, say a craw tube or something like that, amazing. I'm really snapping that jig off and they're really reacting to it. So it's a, the presentation is everything. You know, little nuances you're doing, walk, walking the crankbait, ripping and popping the jig, yeah, you know, finessing a, a, a jig worm. There's one, oh, there's a big one, Al. Wow, oh, I got a whopper on. There you go. Oh man, that's a better one there. Mr. Crankbait, nice ooh, fish. there you go. Nice oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful fish. Look at that, boy. Come here, buddy, come here. You know, good one, no Jim. question about it. When it comes to, there's a lot of different subtleties to being successful in weeds and crankbaits are one of them. But I can guarantee you one thing, it's worth your effort to put some time in to learn the subtleties to be more successful on the water. When you're talking about weed fishing for bass, Another good one. They're not giants, but they're good ones. There's a new one on our brat. It's a beautiful lure, and I can guarantee you one thing, it really produces bass out of weed beds. Hello. 
Hey, do you like good news? Naturally you do. Something that uplifts you for the day, especially on some of those days that you really need some uplifting. Uh, I want to share with you something that had a major impact on my life. Just a short, sweet note from a couple of friends of mine that I've known for many, many years. They don't even know that I kept this. I've kept this for many, 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 many years and I read it on a regular basis. Let me just, it was a time in uh, marrying my wife and in my life when we were going through a major challenge, health challenge in my wife's case. Just, just opening, opening said, very simple. Dear Al and Mary, you've been on my heart a lot this week and my prayers. Love you, Larry and Val. Simple, short sentence. And it had one, two, three, five healing scriptures in it. I'm going to read one of them that really burned into Mary's heart and mine. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. You can't believe how important that was to us at that point in our lives. They don't even know. I never shared that with them. I know they're watching this television show right now. They'll really be blessed by this. This was many, many years ago at a time when we really needed some uplifting. There is no book in the world that offers more hope and uplifting than the Bible, no matter what situation you're dealing with in life. There's an answer here that gives you hope. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.